self-checkout register number 13, just scanned items totaling $257 for less than $1. Security, I repeat, that man just scanned items for nearly 200 times less than that actual cost. How did he do it? He hacked the QR codes of the products. But how? Let's start from the beginning and figure out what exactly a QR code is. A QR code, also known as a two-dimensional barcode, is the simplest and most common example of machine vision. Distinguishing black from white is the easiest, and in this simplest case, the computer deals only with black and white areas, similar to zero and one. What remains is merely to devise a method for encoding data, that is, in which sequence these zeros and ones are to be read. Moreover, since we are dealing with an image that can be displayed at various angles and with different degrees of illumination, error control is required. In fact, the order in which the computer reads a QR code is not so important to us. Why? Because both we, the users displaying the QR code, and the programmer's writing software to process the data encrypted within, are completely abstracted from the encoding process. We use mobile applications that generate them, and various terminals use libraries that perform the reverse procedure, decoding. For us, the data itself, what is encoded, and how it will be processed by the end system are far more interesting. All we need to understand is that a QR code is merely a standard identifier, a random number that precisely identifies a product, your ticket, or something else. The reader is essentially a computer with a camera, either integrated into a single unit or as separate computer and camera components. The task of the reader is to decode the displayed QR code and pass it to the computer. And the task of the computer is to compare the obtained identifier with a database or something else. Thus, what we have is essentially the same as user input, as in any other case, such as during a hacker attack on websites. This means here we might be dealing with typical injections. But let's go over everything step by step. This video was created by SumSub, the verification platform. But what is SumSub? It's a large tech team with ambitious goals. Let's get acquainted. We started in 2015. Our first development was a graphic editor detector. Here's how it worked. You see, the document on the left was edited in Photoshop. Caught. We realize that this technology is needed to combat fraud. For example, to prevent a fraudster from registering on a financial platform with fake documents to launder money and leave no traces. Now, SumSub is one verification platform that helps businesses monitor fraud worldwide and at every step of the customer journey. The list of our verification technologies and business solutions has grown. And our mission remains the same. By eliminating fraud and verification hurdles, we aim to create a world where anyone, regardless of age, location or computing skills, can securely access and use any service. Our people work all over the world. It was nice to meet you. And now, let's get back onto the topic of this video. Let's look at everything through the eyes of a programmer, a system administrator, and an engineer. So, an engineer will take a single board computer, a CSI, DVP, or USB camera, connect everything together and enclose it in a sturdy case. The administrator will deal with Linux, as Linux is ubiquitous and can be run as almost any hardware. Next, they will install a database, for example, PostgreSQL and a popular programming language with extensive library support, including QR code functionality. Finally, the programmer will work with a webcam, the same Linux and application languages like Python and SQL. Essentially, this environment does not differ much from a regular computer, which we will use to simplify our setup. If we're developing software for a store where every product has a QR label that needs to be associated with a price, we first need a database. It's always more convenient to store all the information in one place. And on the product, use only a unique number that precisely identifies the product and refers to a single row in the database. This way, we can store as much information about the product as we want, including detailed descriptions, production, and, of course, price. 
and all this can fit into a QR code. For each product, we need to generate a QR code in which its numerical code, the ID field in the database, will be encoded. For this, we take some library for working with QR codes, enter our number and get a QR code, which can be printed and attached to the product. The user brings the code to the reader and our software, using the library, decodes the QR code, retrieves the product identifier and forms a request to the database with it. A non-specialist will not notice the huge danger in this code. A brief explanation of the logic and hidden danger. The program code runs in an infinite loop, capturing an image from the camera. The image is stored in the variable frame. If a QR code is present in the frame, it is decoded and the data is stored in the variable data. If the QR code is successfully decoded and the variable data is not empty, the decoded data is passed to the get underscore price function. In the get price function, this data is stored in the variable price underscore ID. Finally, this data is directly inserted into an SQL query to the database as the product ID. At this point, we encounter a highly common and dangerous vulnerability, SQL injection. The thing is, working with databases, searching for values in it, adding new ones, modifying existing ones, and deleting old data occurs in a special language, SQL. And the text of the query itself is formed each time based on the entered values. That is, our entered value becomes part of the SQL query. But an SQL query is an entire language, and besides the requested data, it also contains a description of the logic, how this data should be interpreted. And here, under very unfortunate circumstances, the entered data can contain not only the product code, but something else. And this something can be those very controlled structures capable of changing the logic of the query. This is the most common example. Such a query to the database will always return a value. The not so obvious nature of this attack vector makes it a reality. After all, not every programmer will remember that a user can encrypt anything they want in a QR code. Let's demonstrate what a hacker can do. First, they must decrypt the QR code to get the product code, even though the product code itself is not needed. Second, they need to append malicious content to the product identifier, that very SQL control structure that changes the logic of the query. This will be the always false operator and one equals zero cancelling the selection of the real product's price, and the operator, union all select 0.01, simply writing the price we want. And third, encrypt the resulting string back into a QR code. Now, our vulnerable software will decode the malicious QR code and unsafely insert the content. Along with a product identifier value, the control structure changing the logic of the query is entered into the request. Instead of its price, we get $0.01. This is pure SQL injection, just shown from an unusual side. As a result, the hacker has formed such a code, whereby they control the product's price. But could a hacker do something worse? What if our store was very economical with IT spending, and the administrators did not properly configure database access, allowing its modification? With just one QR request, a hacker could change all product prices to $0.01. To do this, we again remake our QR code, but incorporate a data modification control structure into it. Or even delete all products and stop the entire store's operation with one QR code. But perhaps most dangerous of all is penetrating the database system through a QR code. Presenting such a code to the reader injects a system command into the request to the database. And the database server comes under the control of the hacker. Moving on to the attack. Of course, a real hacker will not know the structure of the database and how to precisely formulate a request for SQL injection. Therefore, they would have to try and iterate through different values in the hope that at least one request will fit. And the speed of QR code scanning will allow them to carry out this attack quite quickly. Here, a flipper won't help us, as we need a device with a screen. Not very large, so it's convenient to quickly carry out the attack and escape. This will be a regular Android phone. We will need a terminal, within which we'll install Python and one Python package. 
Now, by typing the following command in the terminal, we can generate a QR code for anything. We need to be able to generate multiple QR codes and display them in one area of the screen. For this purpose, we use the following simplest code. Now, how to read a QR code. For this, we can use Termux API for access to the phone's camera and this console recognizer. We have the primitives for reading and creating QR codes ready. Now they can be easily used in various attacking scripts. Now let's write a real attacking script, reading some dictionary containing SQL injections. All that's left is to record examples of SQL injections for different probable database structures into a dictionary. Now our script will methodically take each injection variant, append it to the product identifier and form a QR code. Then, after half a second, it clears the screen and generates a new QR code in place of the old one, and so on. The rate at which QR codes change can vary depending on the reader. In our setup, we can see how a hacker, using harmful QR codes, triggers multiple errors until one of their requests eventually opens a backdoor on the server. Today, QR code scanners are everywhere, indicating that many companies could be vulnerable to such attacks, including stores, museums, cafes and restaurants, and even the transportation sector. But technologies are not sleeping. It's hard to imagine which industries will be under threat in the future. Remember, behind every beautiful QR code lies potential danger.